Welcome to the Minding My Own Business webinar series. My name is Dirk Dieters. I'm the Executive Director of the Fremont Group. Today we'll be talking about leadership. The Fremont Group is a nonprofit organization. Our core business is management, consulting, coaching, and mentoring. We produce these services through our series of success partners, which are located nationwide, that we match up with small business owners. We also have an accounting division. For more information about the Fremont Group, visit our website at www.tfginfo.org. The Minding My Own Business webinar series is an ongoing series of webinars structured around the book Minding My Own Business, of which I authored. Uh, it, in particular, we deal with the six responsibilities of the small business owners. We break those six responsibilities into two month segments, and each two months we produce a major uh, webinar, uh, which is interactive with our clients. And uh, that is posted on our Patreon site at patreon.com, the Fremont Group. On the Patreon site, you also have uh, public posts and uh, posts for different le tier levels of patrons uh, for our organization. Please take a look at our Patreon site and become a patron. One of my personal favorites from history is Teddy Roosevelt. Uh, he's a very quotable person. He has a lot of very interesting things to say. Uh, like everyone else, he has in, in history, they, there's some things you may agree with or may not agree with. Uh, that's part of what makes them so interesting. Uh, under leadership, he has an excellent quotation, and that's really what the, uh, this webinar is going to uh, delve into, is this one particular quote that I picked out from him. And the quote reads, the best executive is one who has sense enough to pick good men to do what he wants done and self-restraint enough to keep from meddling with them while they do it. Now it's a little bit dated because we're not going to just pick good men anymore. We've got many good women to pick from also. But we're going to tear this quote apart and see how it applies to you in running your small business. As a small business owner, to become an executive is a whole nother level. There's three transformations that a person must do to accomplish this. First transformation, transformation is to go from worker within the com company to manager within the company. A person who is a worker is the person who simply provides the function. You know, most all companies started off that way. Uh, the plumber who liked to do plumbing, the carpenter that liked to do carpentry, the accountant that liked to do accounting, whatever it may be. They were workers, but they, at this point, did not own a business. They owned a job. And they had to transform that and take their first step, which was to become a manager of people doing the job. And the managers of the people have to oversee the work of other people. But you're still not an executive at that level because there's another transformation that has to take place. And that transformation is to go from manager to managing the managers. That's what executives do. They manage the managers. They manage the people who are uh, their key employees, their climbers, as we've talked about in our organizational structure webinars. And these are the people that uh, when you have this level, these, then you can call yourself an executive. But before you even think about doing that, you have to answer the question, do you want to own a business or do you want to own a job? Some people are just very happy just doing a job, just doing the uh, function of whatever it is that they do. And this can be, uh, uh, you know, pushing a broom or uh, doing legal briefs. It makes no difference. Uh, they're all uh, businesses that you have to go through that same transformation. And some people just like the function. If you like the function, you're always going to be paid as a worker, not as a business owner. If you want to be paid as a business owner, you have to consciously go through those transformations and not be afraid to grow your business. Uh, we talked about delegation and control in, in some of our previous webinars, and those things have to be maintained. Failure to do that is why uh, the, are the horror stories you hear about uh, growth. But the fact is, and as we talked about in our risk manage uh, webinars, not growing may be the biggest risk to many businesses. 
So the first thing that TR says is to pick good people. There's a lot in those three words, and in particular, pick good people. So many businesses do not have a rational recruitment plan, staffing plan. They are wait until they have an opening, then take the first person that comes through the door that seems appropriate. A truly effective recruitment plan is led by the leader. They anticipate growth, how many people they're going to need, how much turnover they're going to, and, and that's a function of how much turnover that they expect to have because we're going to have turnover. You want turnover. You want the turnover to take place within your quitters uh, so that you can have at least campers, if not some more climbers. So how many people are we going to need by when? And then how are we going to go find them? Where are we going to get them? Fact of the matter is, many times, uh, these are not people who aren't working. These are people who are working somewhere else. And you're going to get them from somebody else. That's fine. But also remember that someone else may be wanting to take your people too. And so not only do we have to have recruitment, we need to make sure uh, that uh, we have proper safeguards and training and, and accountability and incentives in place so that you can constantly be picking your own people, keep, or recruiting your own people and keeping them in place. But you have to pick good people. Good people aren't necessarily the best technical people unless you hire them just for a technical position. It's probably just as important to recruit corporate culture and work ethic as it is technical expertise. Most all technical expertise can be taught. You can become a brain surgeon in what, six years at a major university, okay? Um, the, that, that can be taught. The question is, are they a fit uh, in your organization? Are they the, are the kind of people that, that, that you want to have there? Uh, and do they have the kind of work ethic that you're looking for? Those two qualifications are really critical in your recruitment program. So to qualify for the first three words of TR's uh, leadership for executives, you have to have a recruitment plan in place so that you can pick good people. You pick good people to do what you want done. There are so many small business owners that don't really know what they want to have someone do. They may just recruit somebody because they like them. They think they're a good person. They're somebody's brother-in-law. Somebody recommended them. They want to work with them, whatever it is. What is the job? You can't hire a person and then create the job. You create the job and then you hire the person that can do that job best because they're supposed to do what you want done, not what they want done. There's a difference. So we have to have a clarity of purpose. What is it that you are expecting them to get done? Do we have a clear job description that lays out the results that you're expecting them to produce and how it's going to be evaluated and how they're going to report it as we talk about in our delegation webinar. We have to have a clear clarity of purpose before you hire somebody and then you have to effectively communicate that to the person. They have to understand the results that they're expected to produce and how much authority, they're, what their level of authority is, going back to the Stephen Covey, Covey work that we talked about uh, last time. You know, what is their level of authority? And is it dynamic or static? No, it's of course, it's dynamic. And you, you are always going to change their level of authority to match the results that they are producing and your comfort level with what they're doing. But what is, you know, we have to communicate all aspects of what you're expecting them to do. And how do we do that? We do that through training and constant reevaluation and constant training and then more evaluation and more training. It is a, uh, a, the job of the executive to see that systems and procedures and controls are put in place so that a constant evolution of your workforce takes place that allows them to move up their different levels of authority uh, and be held accountable and 
and that they also have proper incentives in place to produce what you want to have done. And once you've accomplished that, we go to the last of TRs, to keep from meddling. How do you keep from meddling? What is TR talking about when he talks about meddling? More recently, the term micromanagement has come about, and that certainly is a form of meddling. The Fremont Group, we have a definition for micromanagement. And micromanagement is when you are managing process rather than results. That usually comes from not having defined the results to begin with. Managing process is a training function. Managing results is how the executive manages and holds his people accountable. But the executive could not have abdicated that responsibility to begin with. Rather, they have to have defined those results before the person was put in, and they have to have clearly communicated what those results are, and the employee has to have believed it. But not only is that um, a requirement, uh, there's an you can't delegate unless you also have a comfort level of knowing that what you want to have done is being done. So how do we create that comfort level within you, or you're going to keep meddling. You have to have a comfort level while they are doing it, otherwise you will meddle. How do you get that comfort level? You get the comfort level from their required reporting. They must understand that a part, a significant and critical part of their job is to report to you their results. How often do they report it? That goes back to their level of authority that you have delegated to them. Can they do, do they have no authority? Can they ask questions? Can they uh, make recommendations? Can they act and report immediately? Can they act and report periodically? Or uh, do they, can they act independently? They need to understand what that level of authority is that they have. That is the responsibility of the executive to establish that and constantly reevaluate that. And, and, and the employee and the executive need to understand that it's a dynamic level, uh, scale uh, and people can move up and down it in different functions and at different times depending on uh, the task and uh, their past performance. But if the, to accomplish the true leadership, you need to make sure that that is tied directly back into their job description, that it's properly communicated to them, that is trained, and that not a moment goes by without a reinforcement of that responsibility. The worst thing that you can do is uh, request some sort of a reporting from somebody and never give them any feedback that you have received it or, or uh, evaluated it and, and, and uh, uh, are taking some action on what it is that they've reported. If they think they're just filing some report that's going to sit on somebody's desk, eventually they simply stop doing it. And who would blame them? Frankly, a good person probably would do that because they understand that my, their time would be better off doing something else. So to stop meddling and to let them do what you want them to do while they're doing it, you need to have laid the groundwork for that. We take great pride uh, in our ability to train and work with or, uh, business owners to accomplish these things. Working with the Fremont Group uh, takes starts with a number of different levels. We have exploratory consultations where you can schedule and for half an hour we'll do a uh, quick review of your business, uh, compare you against other levels, identify different uh, uh, areas of competency and weakness. Um, that uh, Those are free. We can do them. You can schedule them off of our website uh, anytime. Uh, you can only do one. They're for new clients only. We also have our formal Minding My Own Business workshops, uh, which are interactive workshops. Um, they uh, last approximately an hour, uh, last longer or shorter, depending on what you're getting out of it. But in those, we go through and uh, with you, uh, we evaluate uh, 
uh, how uh, you stack up against the uh, six responsibilities of the small business owner. That also can be, as a matter of fact, all of these can be scheduled uh, off of our website at tfginfo.org. We also have our accounting division where we can do an accounting analysis and show you how much money we can save you and improve your operations uh, by uh, uh, having our staff take over and do your QuickBooks accounting and uh, creating your uh, customized reporting and so on uh, that uh, will be handled uh, without vacations, without interruption, and uh, done properly and customized to what you need. And then lastly, we have our full-blown initial consultations, which is where client relationships start. We used to do these always uh, on site. Uh, you still have that option if you want to pay for the travel, uh, and they can be more effective that way in, so, in some cases. However, we've converted almost everything now to uh, Zoom and online uh, presentations. And our uh, initial consultations, which last about a day and a half, uh, learn about your business, evaluate your financials, evaluate your employees, where you stand, uh, all of your management techniques and so on. And then together with you, uh, assess what the rocks in the road are that are stopping you from accomplishing your goal and lay out and, and create with you a formal action plan as to how you're going to address those. All of these are available on uh, tfginfo.org. Take a look and we hope you'll take advantage of some of those.